Okay guys, so in this video we are gonna look at some basic, well, error handling, so let's get into it. So here I am on the application and basically I want to be able to express that there was some sort of issue with the network or something went wrong with the server or something like that and I want to do that in a non-intrusive way. So let's just kill the server and what's going to happen is that we're going to see this little red bar here, server was disconnected. And if I start the server up again and we just run that, we're going to see that the message, yeah, just kind of disappears, all magic-like, right? And basically this is like a basic implementation of a snack bar or a flash message or whatever you want to call it, where we just inform the user that something went wrong with whatever they were doing. I mean, we can do other things as well that will, well, we could, in theory, we could do something like we can do user routes. Let's say that something goes wrong with this part here. Let's do something like that. And uh, well, let's save that. And then when we refresh, we will see that, hey, we got this little message said, that said foo, and then that just kind of disappears. So just some way of reporting to the user that something went wrong. We might, of course, want to do something a little bit more clever going forward, but for now this is going to be good enough. So let's look at the code. Let's close that down there. So first and foremost, we've added to our application code here, we've just added a module called snack bar. And the reason why we put this above everything else is because when the application is actually loading, like for example, when the user is logging in, as we saw there earlier, if I cause an issue as part of checking whether or not a user is logged in, uh, it's important that this module has been loaded before because it's the way that the user will be informed that there was an error. If I put this down here, that means that all these all of these events are going to be like this code is going to execute before I actually have a way of communicating to the user that something actually went wrong. So that's why I put it up here. And I've added a little bit of a change here. We can see here that we have a few new actions. So basically, well, as you can see, okay, I have a way of showing an error. That's about it, really. And then we have a few new events, show errors. That's about it, really. And then we have, I actually see now that I don't need that. Oh, yeah, a bit of a mistake of my part. Let's just revert this stuff here because I don't think that we actually are using this in any way. So let's do a bit of live stuff just because we can. And then let's refresh and let's see if everything works. Everything seems to be working still. And there seem to be no like compilation issues with our webpack. Cool. So let's get back on track. Basically, I, you know, you play around with a few ideas and then you settle on something and then, hey, you review it and you realize that, hey, you forgot to remove some stuff that you're not using anymore. Anywho, I, do, I digress. So we have a few new ways of, well, and a few new listeners, basically. So we added a error handler a, and a connect and a disconnect handler for our client-side socket communication. And the reason why we want to do that is because, as we can see here, we actually have a action dispatch or an action for showing an error and hiding the snack bar. It's just that the this code is actually in its own module. That's why I could revert the other stuff because I put it in the application con like, uh, on the application level instead of putting it in a snack bar originally, but I changed my mind. So showing an error, simple, easy piece. So when the socket connection gets an error message, hey, that's gonna be what we're gonna do. And if there is a connect, in other words, uh, basically that's why you saw that when the when I kill the server this event is going to be fired and we're simply going to show to the user that hey the server was disconnected but when the reconnection happens we hide the snack bar and then we run the init uh, method basically we should just want to reinitialize everything so that we can reconnect to all of our different um, sockets on the server that's about it really and uh, here's the snack bar itself it's just another component which should feel familiar at this point. It's very simple. 
it's just a div with a message and then when the action handler is fired or the on event method is called we're going to check if we're supposed to show the error if that's the case we're going to set the content the text content we're going to remove the show flag and then we're going to re-add it again and the reason we, why we add, remove it first and then add it is just so that we can always clear it because we don't want to just keep on adding it because if we forgot to clear it before it might be the case where we actually just add multiple of these class names onto the same element and we don't want that we just want to have one select or one class that uh, one class name that's it hide snack bar simple remove the selector and then of course we have our index.js file, which is, well, as you can see, I mean, this pattern is hopefully very, I mean, all of them, every component we made so far pretty much follows the same pattern where we isolate everything and we have an entry point. And this is no different. So we have our own little entry point here into our index.js file, where we go to the page in this case, because we actually did add this to the page here. So at the top of the page, we do actually have an element that we can hook into. And yeah, that's about it. We grab the snack bar, we instantiate it, and then we create the element, and then we just replace it. That's about it, really. Here is our CSS, uh, very minimalistic, not much going on there. Here are our actions, which, as you saw earlier, like I just reverted the old stuff because hey, I didn't need them. I had this instead, which is the way to the way I prefer to do it, or this at least for now. And then we have our events. We added a little bit of a global style as well, where we set the height of the snack bar, because right now we just want it to be a one-liner, and then we might as well just set the height of that element. And then we added in our new component into our imports. And here we add a little bit of stuff as well. So this is something that is fairly new that is gonna, we're gonna touch on that. So basically what we've done now is that we have wrapped all of our API calls in this little handle network error function. It's a higher order function and we'll, don't worry, we're gonna look, look through the logic. And it's gonna be the same for all of these endpoints and the user API pretty much the exact same thing. I did a little bit of a refactor here as well. I saw that I had a value I wasn't using anymore. So I just pulled that out of there. So what is handle network error? Well, this is handle network error. So let's walk through this. So when you make a fetch call using the native browser APIs, you will be basically the browser is going to throw an error depending on the response code and responses that are in the 500 range is going to throw an error. A 404 will also throw an error but it's not necessarily an error in of itself. So what we want because if we go back to the beginning of time and we have a look at what we actually have in our application you will see that we do actually have this custom way of this like actually communicating from our application that the there was an error somehow. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna set the status code to whatever the server decides or whoever throws the error or 500. But then we're also going to respond with the message of the error in this little JSON object. And that's where this comes in because instead of me having to basically go to every single call site where all of these functions are being called and like, putting a bunch of logic in each of these. All I wanted to do was to express that, okay, I know how my server is going to communicate an error every single time. So let's just create a higher order function that can take in the network function, this function, one of these, and simply wrap that in logic that will handle the error case. And that's what this is doing. So what it's gonna do is that it's gonna take in the function that is gonna do the network call. And I'm going to return another function that is going to be represent, like just going to be the thing that we are then referencing from our code. And when that function is called, I'm going to grab the arguments, which is a magical keyword that just represents, okay, grab all the arguments that are the inputs into this function here. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the original function and use apply, basically call this function with the this keyword being this reference and then the arguments that was passed in into this function. And back, I'm, I'm just going to get a value back. And since this is something that is specific to the network functions, we know that all of these async functions are going to return a promise. 
So the value that I'm going to get back is going to be a prom promise. And then I simply add, latch on a dot then function onto that. And then I grab the data because the data that's going to come back is actually going to be the response itself. So this is going to be like the the data it's like uh, basically it's just going to be the response from the server and then I simply check if that data if if I find some data and that data has an error property we could probably make this even more expressive because there is on the off chance that we actually have some other data structure that could come back that we have also had have the error field uh, this could cause an issue but for our simple little example here it should be good enough and then all it's going to do is that it's going to re reference the store and dispatch the error that's about it and then I set a timeout in this case where I just flash the message I show it first and then I set a timeout of 1.5 seconds and then I hide the message again and that's what you saw earlier when I failed the login you saw that there was a full error which came from the server and then just kind of disappeared after 1.5 seconds so that's just me trying to hand, like in a more generic fa fashion or a, a consistent way, handle errors that are coming over the network. We can of course elaborate on this, but for now this is going to be good enough. So now we pretty much have a way, a strategy of il illustrating errors, and yeah, that's about it. So yeah, I hope you have a great day.